So do you have any heavy tools in the garage that you wish you could move a lot easier? Maybe even move them off to the wall when you're done, wheel them back out when you want to use them, and then just store it a lot nicer and just move it easier. I'll show you guys how I solved that problem with this mobile base. So what I got here is this Win mobile base. It says it has a 500 pound capacity. I got off Amazon for maybe like $49. Pretty affordable. I'm gonna unbox it, show you guys how it goes together, and then we're actually gonna put it on this joiner right here and see how well it does. Um, I've never bought anything from Win, and I know they have a lot of affordable products, so this will be my first one. And let's see how it goes, and I'll show you how it works. So first thing I had to do was just unbox it and get all the pieces out. I wanted to get a good idea of how many pieces I was gonna be working with. The instructions are pretty straightforward. It said that I needed to start with the wheels in the back or the fixed wheels, so I just kinda wanted to set everything up to get an idea of what it might look like and exactly how many pieces I was gonna be dealing with. It has two wheels in the back with a little lever system. It has two fixed wheels in the front. And then it came with four small pieces and four larger pieces, which I guess are just to kind of adjust the width and length of whatever base you may need. The instructions told me to start with the two fixed wheels. Those are pretty simple. You just had to put a bolt through and a little bushing. The ones in the back, it's a two-step process. They have you put in the wheel and then they have you put in the lever afterwards. It's just a couple bolts that go through with some nuts. One thing I learned here is that you don't want to over tighten them. It pinches down on the two pieces and actually keeps the whole thing from working correctly. So you do not want to over tighten those. Next was to kind of figure out exactly how wide I needed to make it. I want to make sure that this thing fits the joiner that I want to put it on. So next step was to just really kind of start laying it out around the tool and figuring out how it goes together. I figured this out that the small pieces are meant to go into the larger pieces and it kind of works as an extension or even a splice if you have to put the two larger pieces together. You can still use one by itself if you needed to, but something I figured out. First, I was just gonna set up the two rear pieces with the levers and I decided just to go with one small piece. It was definitely gonna be wide enough and it gave me a couple other adjustments in case I needed to go wider than what I initially thought. Once I put that together, I set it up so that it fit almost exactly to the width of the tool. I did the same for the other piece where the fixed wheels were. Put a couple bolts in there. The nuts and bolts that are meant to hold it together are really easy to do. Now I just need to figure out the exact length. And here I had to use one of the smaller pieces to actually splice the two larger together. After I got that all together, I figured it out. It's pretty simple, the bolts and the nuts that go in, they, they thread together really easy and it's easy to tighten. I believe it was a 10 millimeter that I used. And then I just had to kind of set the tool into it. This took a little bit of work because I made the base so tight to the actual width and length of the tool that since I was moving this tool by myself, it took me a minute to actually get it to fit correctly. But it was pretty easy. Um, I got it on the first try. And now all you have to do is kind of adjust those rubber stops so that when the wheels are disengaged, it sits um, firm on the ground. You can see here, I still had to kind of figure out what I was gonna do to get it to sit correctly once the wheels were disengaged. And I also ended up putting some wood shims around the base of the tool so that it wouldn't move in the base. Overall, the whole thing really just rolls around really easy. It feels very sturdy and secure. The wheels are easy to disengage and the rubber garments or those rubber stops really make it feel strong on the ground there. And like I said, I ended up coming around and putting in some wood shims around the base of the tool. And that just kind of filled a little bit of a void that there was. Um, the base is really tight, but even, even then I still had a little bit of a wiggle room. And so this will just kind of help in case I want to run material through. I don't have to worry about the tool trying to dislodge or move. I'm not bolting it down to the base, but the weight of the tool should hold it pretty secure here. But this is just something extra that I did. I just put some wood shims that I kind of made from some scrap that I had laying around the garage. Overall, I'm really happy with it. It was really easy to put together. It took me about 30, 40 minutes total. Longest part was really just trying to move the tool by myself.
You can see here I had to take the rubber feet off the tool itself so that it would sit flat in the base. I don't think it should sit in the base with those rubber um, feet that the tool originally has. It would make it probably a little bit wobbly, so I just took those off. And then this is just a little bit closer look at the wood that I wedged in there and the wheels and the system and how it works. And that's pretty much it. It was really easy to go together. A little overwhelming at first with all the nuts and bolts, but there's some instructions and then there's pictures of showing you what it's supposed to look like when it's done. That's always helpful. But once I got it kind of going together, everything fell into place. And really the most difficult part was trying to figure out exactly how to space my wheels, how wide I wanted to make this base. And um, my goal was to try to keep it as tight to the tool as I could. And that actually made me have a little um, bit of a problem at the end because I was trying to move this tool by myself and it was almost an exact fit. So I had to um, take a couple extra minutes just trying to wiggle it in there and I even had to use a little bit of a pry bar to kind of set the tool in. But it fits nice and tight, it's perfect. That was one of my worries was that I wasn't gonna be able to get it to be the right width, the right length. Um, I even put a little bit of a, a wood shim in there just because I want to make sure that it doesn't move around in the base. But this tool is not 500 pounds, but it is a couple hundred pounds. It's not going to move too much on its own, but still, if you're running material through it and you're pushing on it, I don't want it to slide in the base. So I just put those wedges in there as a little bit of an extra safety measure. But all in all, I'm really happy with it. It went together easy. It looks like it's definitely strong enough. And for 50 bucks, you can't really beat it. It had free shipping on Amazon, so again, I couldn't beat the price. One of the reasons I was actually looking at buying one that's already made, like this wind base, versus building my own, was because every time I looked at pricing out the materials and buying my own casters and wheels or locking mechanisms, I was end up, I was end up spending more than 50 bucks anyway. So I thought I was gonna save money by building that myself or maybe even welding my own. And in all reality, for $50, you can't beat it. There are a lot of other more expensive ones out there, but I went with this one for the price. Definitely not disappointed. So I'd recommend it to you guys. I might even buy one more because I have another tool that needs a base. And um, yeah, it was pretty easy and straightforward. Hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next build.